The next book in our Jason Chin author study is Island, a story of the Galapagos by Jason Chin. One, birth, six million years ago. The sun is rising over a lonely group of islands more than 600 miles away from the nearest continent. The air is still and the sea is calm, but beneath the water something is stirring. A volcano has been growing under the ocean for millions of years. With this eruption, it rises above the water for the first time, and a new island is born. Each time the volcano erupts, lava spews forth. Eventually, the lava cools, becoming hard black rock, and the island grows and grows and grows. Many years pass. Frequent eruptions make the island treacherous and nothing lives on it until a seed falls from a tree on one of the older islands. It floats for weeks and eventually arrives. In time, a mangrove tree takes root. Later, a seabird discovers the island and stops for a rest. She decides to make it her home. Marine iguanas swim from one of the older islands. Their long claws help them cling to the slippery rocks as they climb from the sea. Their powerful tails propel them as they dive to eat green algae below the water's surface. Their blunt snouts help them to crop the algae close to the rocks it grows on. Life has arrived on the island. 2. Childhood, 5 million years ago after one million years, the island has grown. The eruptions are less frequent, and it's easier for plants and animals to live here. The ground around it is full of fish, and seabirds gobble them up in feeding frenzies just offshore. Mangrove trees flourish in sheltered coves along the coast. Their roots form a tangled maze in the shallow water and provide a home for sea turtles and young sharks and rays. Land iguanas float to the island on logs and branches. Once on land, they climb up past the mangroves and settle on the island slopes. After two million years, the island has become the largest in the group. Because of its height, much more rain falls on it, and it's home to more life than ever before. Old lava flows still scar its slopes, but it has erupted for the last time. Now that it has finished erupting, it will begin to sink very, very slowly, less than one millimeter per year. There are different climate zones at different elevations. Rain and fog frequently cover its upper slopes, and the ground is covered with plants. Farther down, the terrain becomes dry and dusty. Land iguanas burrow in the soil. On sections of the coast, the crashing waves have worn the rocky shore into sandy beaches where sea turtles and marine iguanas lay their eggs. Meanwhile, in the waters to the west, new islands are born. One day, a seabird leaves and lands on one of the new islands. She starts a new colony. Eventually, more of the island's plants and animals colonize the new islands, including marine iguanas, mangroves, and land iguanas. 3. Adulthood, 3 million years ago. 3 million years have passed since the island was born. Several younger islands have grown and merged into each other, forming one enormous landmass. Our island is no longer the largest, but many new species have come to its shores, and many more continue to arrive. Seagulls arrived years ago and now nest on its rocky cliffs. Penguins have come from the south. The water surrounding the island is just cold enough for them to survive. Frigate birds live near the coast. 
They are pirates and steal fish straight from the mouths of other seabirds. Pelicans nest in mangrove trees and fish in the island's sheltered lagoons. Over the next million years, more species arrive. Sea lions from the north establish colonies on the island's beaches. In a distant land, a flood washes a group of tortoises out to sea. After floating for weeks, ocean currents carry them to shore. Across the ocean, some cormorants are lost at sea. Luckily, they find the island and plenty of food just off its coast. A group of finches is forced from its homeland. Here, they find plenty of small seeds to eat. The island is four million years old. It has continued to sink, and as it becomes smaller, less rain falls on it. Droughts are more and more common. During a drought, few plants survive. Fewer plants mean fewer seeds for the finches to eat. It doesn't take long for the finches to eat most of the seeds on the island. Only large seeds remain because they're difficult to eat. Most finches' beaks are too small to open them, and they die of starvation. A few finches have slightly larger beaks than the rest, and they can open the larger seeds. They survive, and in time, they have chicks. The chicks inherit their parents' beaks. Since only larger beaked finches survive, only larger beaked chicks are born. This generation of finches has slightly larger beaks than the last generation. The droughts continue, and with each, the finches' beaks become a little larger. Over many generations, they gradually grow very large because larger beaks help them to survive the droughts. Over millions of years, many other species change too. Some seagulls begin to hunt at night. In time, their eyes become larger, allowing them to see better in the dark. The tortoises' shells change shape. As the land becomes drier, their shells become smaller and turn up in front. This saddleback shape is better for keeping cool and navigating the desert. One kind of seabird changes, but this is not due to the changing climate. The feet of these boobies gradually turn blue to help them attract mates. Snails that live in the island's moist highlands are changing as the environment becomes drier. Their thick, round shells get smaller and thinner and better suited for the new climate. The cormorants' bodies get heavier and their legs become more powerful, allowing them to swim faster and deeper to catch more food. On the island, they have no predators to escape, so they don't need to fly. Little by little, their wings shrink, and eventually they are so small that the cormorants can't fly at all. 4. Old Age 1 million years ago. After 5 million years, the island has become low and flat. It is also smaller and drier. Seabird colonies still swarm over its cliffs. Tortoises still plod across its soil. And marine iguanas and sea lions still live on its rocky shores. But some species can no longer live on the sinking island. Thousands of years pass. The island sinks farther. Now it's only suitable for a few species. Most of its plants and animals are gone. Eventually, it is reduced to a small rock, barely rising above the water. It is lifeless once again. Finally, nearly six million years after it was born, the island sinks below the waves forever. 5. Epilogue, 1835 It's been many years since the island disappeared. There are 15 large islands now, and on them live the descendants of the plants and animals that once called our island home. The plants and animals here have adapted to the environment on these islands, and many of them exist nowhere else on Earth. Eventually, these islands will sink beneath the waves too, and new ones will emerge. As they change, their plants and animals will change with them, moving from one island to the next, 
somehow finding a way to survive. These are the Galapagos Islands. The next pages are Jason Chin's afterwards about why he wrote this book and more information about the Galapagos Islands. He writes about Charles Darwin and the Galapagos. Charles Darwin was a scientist who discovered evolution, a theory that he came upon when he was studying the Galapagos Islands and all the animals who lived on the island that only had adaptations found on these islands and nowhere else in the world. He tells us about the geography of the Galapagos Islands too. The islands are found over 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador in South America. Over 100 islands form the Galapagos Islands. They live over a volcanic hotspot, which is why these volcanoes keep erupting, forming new rock that transforms into livable islands. Jason Chin also tells us about endemic species of the Galapagos. These are species of plants and animals that can only exist in the Galapagos and are found nowhere else in the world. With images of some of the adaptations we saw throughout the book from animals that changed over time to better equip them to live on the Galapagos Islands. He says the specifics of the story are educated guesses and should not be taken as fact. The story is based on science, but brought to life through my imagination. He hopes that it will excite and inspire readers just as the remarkable islands of the Galapagos have excited and inspired him. Thank you, Jason Chin, for another great nonfiction book.